Hey, hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and a while back, I had asked you guys to submit your top questions regarding bundling. A lot of you have started bundling, all of you guys are considering bundling, you've heard of bundling, you think it's a good idea, you're not sure, some of you have tried it, some of you have tried it and succeeded, some of you have tried it and failed. Let's talk about all of the common uh, FAQs and questions you have regarding bundling and wholesale. Specifically, I had hundreds of questions come in and actually, I'm going to answer what I think is the top 10 things that are recurring. So a lot of you guys sent in the very same questions or very similar questions. Some were super specific, so I'm not going to answer those directly. But hopefully a lot of these answers here will give you the clarity that you need to continue moving forward. Or at least give you some ideas of are you on the right track or are you not on the right track when it comes to bundling and, and so forth. So let me get to those questions in just a minute. But first, I want to remind you that we have a few days left on our Wholesale Bundles 3.0 uh, pre-order event. So Wholesale Bundles is being completely updated and revised for 2022. All the new changes, all the new updates, new videos, all of these things. If you are a current student, you have a lifetime access. So you need to do nothing except wait for 3.0 to come out. You will have um, early access to that as a student already of Wholesale Bundles. So you need to do nothing. You already have Wholesale Bundles 2.0. You do not need to do anything at all. You will automatically receive all of the brand new, the brand new course course, the brand new updates, all the modules, you're welcome. That's what you signed up for. And I told you that I would always keep it updated and keep it current so that you have all of the current information. And as a student, whether you purchased way back in 2015 or you purchased yesterday, you get Wholesale Bundles 3.0 as a update for the course. So you don't need to do anything. But if you are not a Wholesale Bundle student, you have three more days to pre-order uh, Wholesale Bundles, the new system that's coming out. Um, but you get the old system in the meantime. So you don't have to wait for 3.0 to launch in a couple of months. You will actually get access to all the training right now. And when the new training comes out, it's almost like a brand new day, a brand new gift. You'll get to get um, all of the information there. Now, is the information the same? Yes, it's very, very similar. Similar. There's nothing groundbreaking that is that is going to be changing in the 3.0 version other than tons more content, more answers, more clarification for the questions that you have, more videos, more checklists and downloads and templates like you've requested over the years. Um, it's going to be the 2.0 version only way better. So um, and it's also Go, the price is going to be going up as well. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of things to be able to do uh, this course material. And of course, that comes with expense. So it comes with a a significant price increase that you might want to take advantage of now because you can get the 3.0 version if you get it within the next three days at the new price because after this it's never going to be this low again it just um, with the material and the content that's in here already and literally hundreds if not thousands of testimonials for the 2.0 version of that everybody already loves the 3.0 version is going to be even better and so I can't wait you have until uh, midnight on March 31st to take advantage of this offer uh, mommyincome.com slash system. It is the same system now. You're just pre-ordering to get all of the new content when it releases at today's price. So that is the advantage that you're getting by buying right now. And it, you'll have lifetime access to the new material. The old material will be available to you instantly. So if you bought it right now and logged into your student portal, you could literally be watching wholesale bundles within the next couple of minutes. So just so that you're aware of that. This is never going to be this low again and you will have access to the early release before it's available to the public. Once you get that now, mommyincome.com forward slash system. Get the wholesale bundle system pre-ordered right now because it is going to be amazing. I've already um, done so much of the content already and it's just super exciting to have new examples and new ways of showing you how to correctly do bundles so that your customer is happy, you're getting the profit margin you want, and you're not dealing with headaches like price hijackers and people tanking your prices and, you know, even IP claims and things like that. You're going to have the most comprehensive, complete, step-by-step -step instruction to be able to make wholesale bundles successful for you. So 
mommyincome.com slash system is where you get the pre-order. Get the pre-order. You only have a few days. So uh, pause this podcast and go grab it now because at, do not do not email me on April 1st and tell me that you missed the sale and that you want it. It's not going to happen. So please take advantage now if you want the pre-sale, or you want the pre-order of 3.0 and you get the other one in the meantime, lifetime access and updates, early release today's your day mommyincome.com slash system and you're going to be able to get the brand new version of wholesale bundles when it comes out and you don't even have to worry about that you don't even have to ask how much the price is going to go up because it won't matter to you because you're buying it today so yay anyway a while back you asked questions about bundles and i want to just give you some clarity I cannot teach my wholesale bundle system in a one hour podcast, but I can give you a little bit more clarity on certain things that you guys have asked about because we need clarity to move forward. We need to be able to know that what we're doing is right, what we're doing is correct, that we're on the right track and that we're moving in the right direction. And so your questions have helped me see some of the issues that you guys are having when either pulling the trigger or deciding that you want to do bundles or you don't do bundles or you've had some issues and mistakes, whatever they are, I'm going to answer your questions here and now. So I chose the best top 10 questions that I thought were like the most comprehensive and the most um, common among all of the questions. I think there was 227 submissions of these questions via, um, you know, podcast, the YouTube channel, the emails, the social, everything else. There's so many questions that came through. And so I had to kind of reduce them to the top 10. And so here they are. And I'm kind of reading the questions like exactly, um, but they're, we're kind of getting the, the general idea here of who not sorry who asked, but how they asked and what what's the best way to do this. So they're not in necessarily any particular order. They're just questions that you guys submitted. And I want to be able to give you brief and clear answer so that you can try to move forward with some of these issues. So here's one question. If I have a bunch of wholesale accounts already, what is the best way to get started with bundling? So in the wholesale bundle system, there is a step-by-step -step framework. In the framework, it teaches you exactly how to do this process. So whether or not you're familiar with even the wholesale accounts that you have, if you have a catalog to look through, you have the ability to start your wholesale bundles research process. What I would suggest you do is open up your catalog, whether it's digital or regular paper catalog, and just look at all the pages. Don't necessarily, you can take some notes if you want to, you can, you know, put it on the back burner, but I want you to just open your eyes and look, look at colors, look at styles, look at what's available, start to look at some of the price points of these items. That's one of the things I really want people to understand. First and foremost, there's a step before having wholesale accounts. You can have a thousand wholesale accounts, but that doesn't matter if you don't do the work to do the research. So some people can take those catalogs and if they have a, a what's it called, a spreadsheet of the UPC codes or things like that, one way to start would be running that entire catalog through something like Scan Unlimited or Evaluate, Scan Power Evaluate or um, some of these tools out there that can literally analyze the entire catalog. Now that's not free to do, um, but if but if you can do that, it can spit out the best selling items from that catalog on Amazon based on the rules that you set up for your ROI or your profits or whatever it is that you want to do there. They, you can set parameters and you can run your catalog through this digital process and it, it can spit out all of the products that are profitable already on Amazon with a single with a single unit UPC. And then you can take those items, look at those items and decide which ones are bundleable based on the wholesale bundle framework that I take you through there. Not everything is bundleable, to be honest. It's not. Not everything is worthy of a bundle. Not everything can be portrayed in a bundle in a way that makes sense. Or maybe it's a size issue or maybe it's just um, there's a hazmat item and a non-hazmat item. And, you know, di different different things. There's different bundleability of products. But finding the most bundleable products on there and then looking at what is frequently bought together with this item. So that's an approach that you can take from... I would say a data widget number standpoint. If you wanted to use spreadsheets, if you have a little bit of 
um, money to invest in something like um a tool that can scan an entire catalog and give you some rules now of course there's learning curves with those things as well it's not cut and dry of um it's not as easy to digest all of the data and say a catalog that has maybe 20,000 products or something in it um but it can give you at least a snapshot of what are the best sellers in here but the other way to do that too is if you've got a wholesale account call one of the sales reps and say what is your, what are your top 10 best sellers what are the top 10 things that people buy the most in, in your specific catalog? And let me take a look at those first. Almost all of your sales reps will have that information or they could at least tell you what their, what their customers are most familiar with, what they're buying the most. Because their customers are also your customers. Those are the customers that are going to be buying from Amazon, from other places. So making sure that you are paying attention to what those best sellers are so if that's something that you have already that's great but in the wholesale bundle system there's also step one which is even finding a niche to begin with so you're already starting with wholesale catalogs or wholesale accounts and so you don't need to do that search but if you're unfamiliar or you don't have any wholesale accounts one of the best ways to do that is is to look at your own life look at your own analyze and brainstorm products to sell and that's a lot of people think what kind of products can I sell oh I could sell this I could you could literally sell anything from like sticky notes and pens to patio furniture so how do we narrow it down well first of all the best way to create a bundle is to solve a problem or meet a need for the customer that means you have to know the customer and you have to know what their problems are and what their needs are and how you can meet them with product the best way to do that is to look for categories of products or niches or subject matter that you are familiar with. It doesn't mean you have to be passionate about it necessarily, but you need to be familiar enough to know what are the needs, what are the trends, what are the problems, what are the issues, what are the pain points with the people that are purchasing these products, okay? So I always use this as a great example of, of needing something, knowing your customer, knowing the problems, knowing the, the issues and being able to solve those issues for your customers with your bundles. That's what you're doing. That's really what you're doing with bundles. I think a lot of people just like skip that and miss that and don't realize that like you're not just throwing a bunch of products together and hoping you're going to make more money off of that. The reality is you're building a bundle for a customer that has issues, needs, problems, concerns, and they want to solve those issues, needs, problems, and concerns with a product. So they just want something. So an example would be, okay, so um, my sister growing up, she had four kids. She has four kids. They're all like, grown adults now, but they, when they were younger, they were, there was like literally four kids, six and younger. So they're all younger and eventually they were in elementary school. Their elementary school required uh, uniforms. And so with the uniforms, there was only two colors of shirts that you could wear. They had to have a collar. They had, had to be short sleeve or long sleeve, but they had to be either light blue or white. She had three boys and a girl. The three boys destroyed their clothes on a regular basis. If you guys ever had boys, you just know they just, they're messy. They get dirty. They play in the dirt. They, they are just, for I, my kids were messy. <laughs> Her kids were messy. And so when you have shirts like that, very light colored shirts that tend to get lots of food stains and grass stains and dirt stains and who knows whatever else they're getting on their shirts, grease, whatever. Um, they're hard to not only keep clean, but keep them nice and neat and all that. So you're going to school five days a week. You can wear a couple of different shirts and you've got three boys and they're always messing up their clothes. You're constantly doing laundry. You're running out of shirts on a regular basis. Well, years ago, um, when her kids were young and there wasn't as much product out there specifically online, they really only sold these uniform shirts twice a year. They sold them sometime like in August, July, August, before school started, and occasionally you'd see a few left on the shelf maybe in January or so. The problem with that is she was in constant need of these. Like every three months, she needed to replace these shirts. I mean, she not all the bleach in the world couldn't save these shirts, right? And so, and she had three kids and then they're in different sizes and they're different things. So what, if you know your customer like that and you know that they're looking for something on a regular basis, then you 
can create products for them. So here's a great example of a bundle that I ended up seeing on Amazon after I was thinking about her issue with, oh, she's like, oh, I can't find uniform shirts anywhere and I need, you know, basically need five of each size and all that. Then I looked on Amazon and realized that someone had created a bundle with five shirts of the same size, two different colors, light blue and white, for a five day week of a kid going to school in a size eight, 10. Perfect. So she could literally go to Amazon and add that to her cart and never worry about it again. She, they, somebody just solved a problem for her. She bought five new shirts for each kid. They were all in a bundle, picked the size, the colors were perfect, the end. So that could be one way to solve that problem. The other way to solve that problem could have been, here is literally the best stain fighting solutions in the world. And you can create a bundle where you, you've got a little bit of like a stain fighter where, where maybe you're using, I don't know what your favorite stain fighter is, but um, you know, it could be a stain fighting solution plus a how-to guide on how to get the, these types of stains just out of anything. And maybe it's a little scrub brush to help you scrub and pat the, the grass stains or whatever out of something and maybe some OxyClean to soak it in, like a literally stain fighting solution so that instead of buying new shirts, you could like save the old ones and, you know, fabric, you know, savers, whatever it is. So there's two different bundles that could potentially meet that need. She chose the one that, because the other one didn't exist. In other words, the stain fighting trying, you know, and plus how much laundry do you really want to do? Like you can only scrub these shirts so much, you guys, before they're just like done. Right? So that solved a problem or met a need. And so those are the main things. When you want to get started with bundling, when you want to do that, it's not just about scanning things to see which one's the most profitable and slapping a couple of things together so that people don't hijack your listing. That is not how we build a bundle. We build a bundle with a problem or a solution to a problem or building with products that will help solve problems and meet needs for customers who have issues. So that's really what you need to do first is not necessarily look through all the products, but think about the customer that you want to serve. And the best way to do that is to understand them. So understanding who that is that you want to serve. What are the problems they have? What are the issues? Another, you know, a problem, I hate using that word because not everything is a problem. It just has a, a product that could bring a solution to the table. Um, when you have a new puppy, for example, you have all kinds of products that you need to buy in order if you've never had a dog before. And so, you know, everything from a leash to um, pet food bowls to maybe those little doggy pee pee pads or everything else. So I've seen bundles where people create new puppy um starter kits because who really has all that stuff? When we got our reps rescued our kittens from our shed, we had never had kittens before and they needed to be like bottle fed because the mom wasn't there. So, you know, we needed products for that. So those are the types of things you need to think about when you're getting started with bundling. It's not about a data spreadsheet of ROIs and picking products that way. Although you could certainly start with that, but eventually you have to circle back around to, okay, these are the top 10 products spit out by the software that are going to make me a good ROI. Now we have to go to the bundle and like who creating the avatar for that, creating the person that needs this, that's going to buy it. Where are they going to use it? How are they going to use it? How are they going to use it together with other products? Are there other products that help enhance this product or make it work easier, better, faster, whatever? So that is the best way really to get started is starting from your own knowledge bank and saying, I know that, you know, if you've had, a, I've had a parent who had passed away from cancer, but during that time, he had a lot of issues with a lot of different products and things because the mobility is limited or your ability to eat certain things are limited or all, all different things, or you have ailments from side effects from your medication. And there's certain things that ease that pain. Um, those are lots of different ways that you can think about bundling. So it's not your typical widget selling, uh, look at the numbers, decide it's you know going to sell or not sell at a certain volume and then move on it's it takes a lot more thinking ahead of time to create bundles but once you do there's no competition there's second to none there's a, you've taken the time to analyze and create a product for a customer they pay you with dollars over and over so it's worth the work but you have to put in the actual work in order for it to take place okay question two is can you explain the GTIN exemption thing again? I want to bring new products to Amazon. How do I do the GTIN, the GTIN exemption thing? 
So GTIN and exemptions, AKA UPC codes, AKA ISBN numbers, um, EANs, uh, those are all GTINs, Global Trade Index Number. That's what that means. A GTIN is a global index trade number, but it, uh, it, the, the names of those are UPC codes, EANs, that barcode number. That's what that is. So um, it, it's called different things, but again, you need one of those to list on Amazon. If you do not have a GTIN, then you need a GTIN exemption. In order to get a GTIN exemption, you generally have to have permission from the brand that issued that brand saying there is no UPC code for this particular product. It is exempt from that because of the following reasons. Now, Amazon gives you reasons why you can get a GTIN exemption. And one of the number one reasons you can get a GTIN exemption is that if it's a custom bundle, which is what you guys are creating. So you don't need a GTIN for, to create your listing. If you're creating something that's not on the list of restricted brands, because there are brands that will not give you a GTIN exemption. So even if you are approved to sell KitchenAid products, that approval doesn't instantly give you the ability to create new listings. It just means you can list on the existing ones that are there. So if you were trying to create a KitchenAid bundle and you wanted to put, I don't know, let's say KitchenAid makes all kinds of kitchen accessories. So you want to put uh, measuring spoons and measuring cups uh, together. They're both made by KitchenAid. They're both red. You want to create a custom bundle for that. You need a UPC code or a GTIN for that. So you file for an exemption saying, I'd like a GTIN exemption for creating a custom bundle for KitchenAid. And they're going to ask you to prove that you have permission from KitchenAid in order to create said bundle. You don't have that permission and they're not going to give it to you. So unfortunately, you're not going to be able to create that bundle because their name is not only on the list of GTIN requirements, but then you actually don't have permission to create custom bundles for them anyway. So the answer is going to be no. So with the GTIN exemption, you can get GTIN exemptions for many brands and you don't have to have permission from all of them, but they're going to want to see what you want to sell. So you're going to have to take pictures of either your packaging and or your items. If you're going to call it generic and they see a brand on anything that you're submitting in the photos, they're going to turn you down. Why? Because generic means no brand brand means brand. So if I hold up this pen right here and it doesn't have anything on it, then that would be generic. This is a generic black pen. But then if I tell them it's generic and then they see this side and say that there is an actual brand on that, it says mommy income on it, then they know that that has a brand. So they're not going to say, well, this is not this is not generic. Their generic definition means it has no brand name under what it's sold on. And honestly, a lot of things on Alibaba, a lot of things that you can buy at wholesale suppliers and places don't have brands attached to them. They're just products. Um, so you think, I think of like, a, I'm like looking at around at what's around me, like mesh desk organizer, you know, doesn't, it could have a brand on it, but most of the time there, there's not branding on those things. It's, or it's a clear glass vase, whatever it is. Um, so making sure you understand the definition of generic versus branding and then going about it in that way. So you can apply for a G10 exemption. There's another, there's a video on my YouTube channel um, called how to, how to get G10 exemptions. Like there's a whole training. So go find that and watch that first. And then if you still have questions, you can come back to me. But the, the G10 exemption policy has not changed. You can apply for a G10 exemption. You need to be able to show proof that this brand can be sold on Amazon and here's the products and here are the items that to be bundled. Bundling is still a reason they give G10 exemptions, but they don't have to say yes to you, especially if you're attempting to list branded items as generic or you're trying to list um branded items that are on the restricted brand list or the list that requires GTINs in order to list them.
So there are brands that say, we do not allow you to list anything unless you have a GTIN, and those are issued by the manufacturer. So at that point, if the manufacturer doesn't give you a GTIN uh, for your bundle, which nine out of 10 times they won't unless they're a smaller private company, um, you're not going to go to KitchenAid and say, hey, can you give me a UPC code to use so I can bundle your stuff together on Amazon? They'll literally laugh at you. So um, unfortunately, that's not going to be the case. So steering clear of these major brands that have restrictions like that are going to be your best bet. And never, and I mean never, never try to put something in a bundle that's on a restricted list. They will eventually find it and they will eventually kick you off. So don't do not do that. G10 exemptions, you follow the protocol, watch the YouTube video exclusively about G10 exemptions and follow the process. It is a process. It's a step-by-step -step process and you can get that there for free. So make sure you tune into that video that's already there so that you can get the full clarity on G10 exemptions. Do you package bundles when branding is required? How do you package bundles when branding is required? Is it expensive? Okay, so Let's talk about packaging for just a moment. So in the wholesale bundle system, I talk all about the the custom packaging, creating custom packaging, what you need to be able to do that, and creating a brand for your bundles. So that it would be called a bundle brand. Now this is, when, when I'm talking about creating a brand, I'm simply asking you to give your company a name and a logo so that your company can curate specially bundled items under a specific brand name. Why do we do that? We do that, number one, to protect ourselves from all of the hard work that we're doing to create bundles. We don't want some person coming on and being like, oh, this is a great bundle and it's not branded at all. So I get to jump on it and copy all their work and just wait, patiently wait for people to release awesome products. Because if it doesn't have any sort of branding or specialty item in it that you're creating yourself and or your branding, anyone can steal that work, jump on your listing, tank your price, whatever else. It's not that difficult to find out where you sourced those products. But that's not the reason that we're bundling, I hope. I hope that's not the reason you're bundling. That might be one of the, it's a solution to some of these problems, but hopefully you're keeping that customer in mind like we just talked about. But you're going to need some sort of packaging for your bundle, whether that's a box or a bag or something like that, you're going to want to put it in. Boxes, custom boxes, I have tons of resources in the training there that talk about where you can get custom products made from. Sticker Mule is one of my favorites for creating custom packaging um, because they make all kinds of different products. Now let me, let me see what I have here. Oh, okay, so I do have this. I know podcast listeners cannot see this bag, but... This is a poly bag that I made from Sticker Mule using the Mommy Income logo. I get it in less than seven days. It comes to my house and I can put most of my bundles in this branded bag that I have here. But sometimes you need a box. Sometimes you need a box to put your items in so that they're not going to get damaged by anything. And of course, making custom printed boxes costs a lot more money than maybe a poly bag does. So... When you're doing that, you want to make sure that the bundles that you're selling, that maybe you can use the custom packaging over and over again. Because Amazon wants you, you don't just, you can't just put a sticker on a box and call it your box. Amazon wants you to have as close as possible to retail packaging as you can get. Now, yes, that can get very expensive if you go that route. But you also have to remember that you are an online store and you don't need to have shelf presence. So your package does not need to look like a retail shelf package would look. Um, it could be a very small, simple, brown, white, blue, any sort of color box that you want. Um, I have chosen maybe just brown with one color. Why do I choose a brown normal box with one color or like a roll top box, for example? Oh, here's another good example for that. So this is the Hermine box, and um, this is a subscription box that... Um, that uh, Trudy and her mom have created for them. So if you ever need a self-care um, box, her mine is best, mommyincome.com slash her mine, and you can subscribe to one of these. But this is an example of a fully printed roll top box, okay? So it opens like this, it's very sturdy, it's meant to be shipped. And see, it's a very sturdy box, it rolls open like this. So custom packaging like this, you probably have to order a ton as a minimum order 
um, in order for it to be affordable because that's a full color, full size wool, wool top print. But if you just get a plain brown box that has that you can have your logo printed on it and your logo is just one color say it's all black or it's all navy blue or something like that and it can say Kristen's favorite things or Kristen's favorite gifts something like that so let's say that's my brand and I'll have like a little circle logo maybe it has something in the middle a star or this that does not have to be fancy and then one color why one color because it's the cheapest to print something with just one color the more colors you add to a logo the more expensive it gets to print it on anything so just keep that in mind. Does it have to be expensive? No. The more exp it gets more expensive, the more the less you order. So obviously when you buy in bulk, if you're buying 500 boxes versus 50 boxes, it's going to be cheaper. Um, so shopping around. There's lots. Um, I can put some our resources uh, on our website. We'll give you a lot of these different things of how you can print packaging. If you're a wholesale bundle student, go to your student portal open the custom packaging training and download the resources that are in there. They're all linked to all different kinds of custom packaging training or custom packaging, uh, custom boxes now, um, place it, you printing, uh, all these different places will print you custom boxes. And if you're not a designer, they have um, a des usually have design teams that can kind of help you with some of that. I would suggest you mess around with playing with making a logo first or having a logo made for pretty inexpensively one color, very small, whatever it is that you want, something very simple, easy to print, um, have that made for you, maybe somewhere on Fiverr, something like that. And then I bring that logo to the company. It's not, it does not have to be expensive. I say that you could probably get, I mean, even on Sticker Mule, mommyincome.com slash Sticker Mule, you'll get free $10 if you purchase from that link. Um, and they also make tape and bubble mailers and other types of products that could be branding for your items. So considering that they make like these, they make stickers, they make, um, I'm like trying to see what else they have too, but they also have that tape that can go around boxes as well. If you're doing merchant fulfill and you want branded tape, like literally packing tape only it's got your brand on it. Um, that could also be considered, um, custom packaging, but Amazon's rule is that it's supposed to be permanently affixed to the product. So they don't like to accept stickers or tape or stamps or anything like that. They want professionally produced packaging as much as possible. So it does not have to be expensive. It's cheaper the more that you do it, but poly bags are probably one of the cheapest ways to go or hang tags. Um, so if you're doing like some sort of clothing or something like that, you could use a hang tag just to show them um, packaging your bundle. So first of all, choosing your packaging is going to depend on what you're putting in it. If it's a clothing item, lightweight item, something that doesn't need a box to survive, then a poly bag is perfectly fine and that's going to be the least expensive option. But if you're doing something that needs, it's more bulky or it's hard plastic or it's glass or something like that and you need to really protect it, then I would go with a standard size box. Now, if you're doing a gift and you're doing a gift bundle, then even making double sure that that outer package is giftable. And then even considering protecting that with a poly bag as well. It doesn't have to be a branded one, but one that's like showing that like if you've spent all of your time, efforts, and energy um, creating a gift bundle for someone, the last thing that you want is for it to arrive looking like it's been you know kicked down the steps a couple times by your UPS driver. So making sure that your packaging lines up with the customer experience that you want to create. It's not just about you or it's not just about your logo, your packaging, or how cheap it is. Cheap is is what it is. So make sure that you're spending time and effort can considering how your bundle is being packaged because it, it's handled multiple times. You handle it. Maybe your prep center handles it. The UPS driver handles it. Then Amazon handles it. Then their conveyor belt handles it. And then it's shipped again back to your customer. So there's lots of touch points. So thinking about protecting your product is way more important than how it looks. Is more about how it's protecting your item. And then start thinking about that. So if there's a little bit of cost involved in, in, in anything that you do in business. And packaging is just one of those costs. It does not have to be expensive. But again, I can't give you a range. I would say ranging anywhere from 25 cents to like a hang tag or to all the way to $12 for a very large and expensive retail style box. So you have to really consider um, 
what products you're selling, how you're selling them, and how you want them to arrive in your customers. So gift boxes are also something you can get, like even from Uline, they can be plain, they can they be all sorts of things. Um, so just considering what type of packaging that you want for your bundles and using something that hopefully can be universal. So if you're going to create this bundle, that's great, but you don't want to create new custom packaging every single time you want to do a new bundle. You want to make sure that you're going to use the same size box or bag over and over again. Um, okay, next question is, how successful do you think it would be to get into a niche that you are passionate about? First of all, if you are passionate about your niche or your niche or whatever you want to call it, that's going to be far easier for you to be successful. And here's why. Because you know the customer, because you are the customer. When you are the customer, you understand exactly the problems and issues that people face. Why do you think there's so many baby products in the world? Because babies are hard to take care of. They need constant care, constant supervision, constant, they're, they're dependent. So the parents have to do everything for the baby and therefore there's millions of products out there to help this experience be more pleasurable, more um, easier, less smelly. You know what I mean? There's so many different diaper products and diaper genies and sprays and uh, containers to put these stinky diapers in because that is a major problem that people have when they have little babies is that they use the bathroom all the time and you're always doing diapers. So there's millions of products out there. So if you are a young mom and you have a baby and you have all these different products, then you are the best person to create baby bundles because you know the problems that you're facing to where if you don't have any kids at all, why on earth would you go get a baby catalog and try to do a baby bundle? You don't even know what the customer's pain points are. You have no idea. If you've never had a kid, you don't have any idea. If you don't have any pets, don't sell pet products. Why? Because you don't know the issues. You're, you just don't know the customer enough to know what they want, what they need. Yeah, can you read spreadsheets and data and say, oh my gosh, this pet costume industry is millions and millions of dollars. Yes. But do you know the issues that pets have with certain things? And no, you don't. So it's it, is it necessary to be passionate about what you're selling? No. Is it important to know your customer and what their pain points are and what they need? Absolutely. Can you find that out without being one of those customers? Sure. There's tons. The internet is full of free resources for you to find out just about anything about just about anything. But it takes a lot less time to start with what you already know because you don't have to learn it and then execute it. You already know it. So that it's easier to start from that point because you already know. So I have a friend who is an avid RV camper, right? And so she's been RV camping for many, many years and she has it down to a science to the point where she knows exactly how much food to pack, how much not to pack, not have to throw stuff away, all the food she needs to make in advance so that she can get it in all in her little fridge, cook it in the RV or outside, store it properly, all these things. Now see, for me, I would know none of that stuff. I don't even know what it's like to be an RV camper. I mean, I've you, I've been in an RV camper many times and I've camped with other people, but it's not my RV. So I don't have to do any of that stuff. I don't have to set it up, take it down, put all the things away, know all the little cubby holes, all that kind of stuff. So why would I try to create a camping bundle for RVers when I have no idea what it's like to even be one of those? So that's the thing is that that's a perfect niche for her to get into because she knows exactly the products and things that people need and what they don't need and why they need them and why they don't need them. So those are great ways to use your own knowledge bank to build bundles. Is it necessary or mandatory? No, but it's way easier to come up with bundles for a specific niche of people because you're familiar with them rather than out of the clear blue sky, what sells really well, and then try to figure out what bundles would be best for that person. It's just easier to start with something that you already know about. So if you've never done office work, maybe you shouldn't sell office supplies. Just saying. That those are the kinds of things. If you've never had a kid, maybe you don't sell toys or baby stuff. If you've never had a pet, don't sell pet stuff. You know, those sort of things. You'll have to learn before you do. So keeping that in mind is really, really important. Okay, next question is, 
How do you work with a prep center for packaging a bundle with products from different vendors? Or is ordering from separate vendors even advisable with bundling? Great question. Okay, so packaging, but when you're working with a prep center, it's just about communication. So you need to very clearly communicate this bundle contains these four items. This item comes from this vendor. It's coming approximately on this day and this is all that. So creating the listing, creating the ASIN and then saying which products go in, in this ASIN by order number, vendor number, uh, item number, whatever that is. So it's just about communication. That's exactly how we, um, even if we're introducing a new bundle to our prep center, we have, we use a spreadsheet to be able to do that. I show you, okay, this is our new ocean bundle. And in our ocean bundle, it contains these four things. And these four things are from these vendors. So they know with receiving that they're going to get four different orders from four different vendors. And they're going to put one of each of these items into this bundle and package it this way. So absolutely, first of all, yes, I actually recommend you use multiple and separate vendors for your items. Why? Because sometimes one vendor doesn't carry all the products that you want to have in your bundle. Number two, it's less, it's harder for your competition to try to copy all of the things yourself, which let's not worry as much about our competition copying us. Yes, people do that, but um, it's not the end of the world especially for a bundle and especially the way if that way I teach bundles no one should be able to jump on your bundle because you're doing it correctly and they won't be able to because you'll be protected with brand registry and custom packaging and you don't have to worry about that but in the instance that you do um, having separate vendors for a specific bundle will help mitigate the risk of somebody jumping on first of all if you're buying something from way over here way over here and over there then that competition then has to hunt down those same items from those same vendors and try to recreate your bundle and that seems like too much work for a copycat so they really don't want to do that but if you make it easy for them say buying three things from the same vendor that's also open to any other Amazon seller that wants to um, then it's going to be a lot easier to copy your bundles so that's just your choice um, but I would definitely advise against multiple vendors in multiple places and using a prep center. And with the prep center, it's really just about communication. And at that point, you can either have your samples at your house where you take a picture and be like, I would love for it to be bundled this way and submit that to your prep center or just heavily communicate. These are the items in this particular bundle. They're coming from these different vendors on these different dates. One of each of them goes into this bundle. If you have to over explain and get pictures or whatever else, so be it. Because over explaining is better than undoing a problem that could be very costly if it's made. So just over communicate with your prep center about that. And why not pick products from different vendors? I mean, you can pick from the same vendors as well. If you're doing wholesale bundling according to the wholesale bundle system, then you should not have to worry about hijackers because you're going to be using a value add item. You're going to be using custom packaging. You're going to have a bundle brand so you don't have to worry about hijackers. Um, so I would suggest, you know, doing what's easiest for you at that point. How much money does it take to create bundles? Well, people create bundles from the dollar store. And right now, that's what, if you put four items from the dollar store together, well, now the dollar store is like $1.25 now. I hope you guys know that. Um, we recently went into the dollar store for something, and my husband was like, I had five bucks, and everything was $1.25. I had no idea that it was that. I was just running in to get these things, and <laughs> he needed an extra dollar because everything was the $1.25 instead. Um, so, newsflash, if you didn't know that, you're welcome. Um, but going to, you could simply, you could go to our, do retail arbitrage bundles from like the dollar store where I've seen people do millions of them. They do um, utensils or they do something like, um, you know, the pot holders and towel sets and things like that from, from the dollar store where you could literally be spending, you know, six bucks on something and creating bundles for that. So how much money does it take to create bundles? Well, um, depends on what kind of things you're bundling, where you're starting with and what kind of um, budget you have. Now, a rule of thumb could just be that, you know, you could try bundles and say you're going to just spend a hundred bucks and you're going to buy 10 bundles and, not 10 bu individual bundles. I'm talking about 10 of the same bundle that you're going to create, T test bundles. And say you're going to get those from the dollar store and you're going to spend your cost of goods that you're going to put four products in, which is about five bucks at this point. 
um, and you're going to spend $5 on those bundles, whatever that is. Maybe you're buying 10 of those bundles. So that could be like 50 bucks, 60 bucks, whatever. Maybe you need a little bit of packaging. That's another $25, $30, depending on where you get it and how much you get it for and all that kind of stuff. And you're just trying out a bundle. So if you like literally could do a whole test run of a bundle from the dollar store for less than a hundred dollars. Um, now, if you're starting with a wholesale catalog, then generally speaking, you're probably going to have to buy about a case of whatever is there. They usually have minimum orders you need to meet. So it doesn't have to be expensive. As a matter of fact, you can even start wholesale for less than $300 with no minimum orders, um, like by tomorrow. Like, so you don't, there's not, people have these ideas that these, this has to be super expensive and costly. And is it time consuming in the business in the beginning? Absolutely. Yes. I'm not going to lie and tell you it's not time consuming. But everything in business is time consuming. Whether you consume your time this way or you consume your time this way, it's still about the same amount of time, if not less time, to do bundling from wholesale catalogs than it is to go to uh, 10 different retail stores, driving around from place to place, bringing stuff in and out of your house and Scotty peelers and all that kind of stuff. I mean, pick how you want to spend your time because you're going to spend time. So if you'd rather do it in your PJs with your laptop in front of your favorite movie while you're looking for wholesale suppliers, or you'd rather, you know, put on your boots and go outside and, and go from store to store to try to get retail arbitrage bundles, the choice is yours, but you're still going to spend time. It's just how you want to spend that time. Um, so how much money does it really take to create? I mean, I would say <clears throat> you could do something as simple as dollar store bundles, uh, less than a hundred bucks, even with custom packaging all the way to, you know, a couple thousand dollars somewhere else. So I fall very much in between that. Um, most of our, and another question that was on here, I think was, what is your suggested ROI for someone new to bundling? Um, I would hope that your suggested ROI is a, at least a hundred percent of what you're selling. So if your cost of goods is $10, I would like to see you profiting $10. So that means you would have to sell that bundle for about 30 bucks, maybe 33, <clears throat> in order to charge $33, make $10, get your cost of goods back, and then pay your Amazon fees, which is about a third of what your selling price is. Then that's the rule of three. You know, it's like whatever your cost is, uh, times that by two, that's going to be your cost of goods plus your Amazon fees, and then your profit's going to be left over. So whatever price you want to set for that, that's the money you get left over. So I would use the rule of three to try to figure that out. Now, remember that it's the same amount of work to do a $10 bundle as it is to do a $50 bundle. So, I mean, it seems like the same amount of work to put four different things or three different things together, get custom packaging, all that stuff. So why not aim a little higher? That's going to depend on your budget. So budgeting in. And if you're already doing retail arbitrage or you're all already doing private label and you've got a lot of capital tied up in those things, then just put a little bit aside to try bundling. It's an 80-20 type thing. Like 80% of your money and time and energy is spending on whatever's still working. And, st and working well for you and then spend the additional 20 to 20% of that time, energy and money on a new concept so that you can have multiple streams of income running. I suggest you do this until you've got those things. There's always going to be something new. So considering all of that and putting that into play. Okay. Is three to five bundles enough for an initial test run? Um, probably not. I would suggest at least six, if not 12. 12 tends to be the case number. The case number for most things that I have found are generally, I don't know, not, I guess not most things. A lot of things that are smaller come in case packs, usually in 12s. It's, it's like a universal system of counting where things come in 12, 48, you know, things like that. Um, has been my general... Um, that's just been the general number. So sometimes things come in two packs or they come in tens or fives, but most places come with 12 or so. So I would suggest with a whole case pack of something, trying, um, trying out like 12 or so. Why? Because Amazon wants you to have some stock. They consider anything less than that, like low stock. And so it will say low stock, which then I don't know if you're penalized for low stock, but it's just something to keep, keep in mind. Um, so maybe starting with about 10 or 12, I think would be a little bit better than three to five, because at that point you just don't really know. And Amazon says they have low stock, so they don't want to advertise things that are low stock because then, I don't know, it's, it's just, it can get complicated. So I would, I would definitely try 12, 10 to 12 bundle. And when I say 10 to 12 bundles, I don't mean different bundles. I mean, 10 to 12 units 
of one bundle. Okay, so just clarifying that. Okay. I'm new and I'm trying to understand how I can take advantage of wholesale bundles. What I don't understand is how people find the bundles. Are people searching for an item in your bundle? Or if they're searching for the whole bundle, do you give your bundle a name? I can't wrap my head around how people find or search for the bundles that that I would put up for sale. That is a great question. And how we do that is, first of all, absolutely name your bundle. So I love that you asked that question because you're already forward thinking about that. And how will they know to look for a bundle if they don't know it exists? Well, some of the ways that they come to your bundle is they're looking for one of the items that are in your bundle and your bundle comes up because that item is in there. So, for example, there is a newborn baby gift set that I've seen that's like a gender neutral um, baby gift, right? And so one of the items in there is like this organic cotton white swaddle blanket that's like uh, something that people are looking for already. Organic cotton swaddle blanket, okay? So that's one of the keywords, one of the keyword phrases that would be part of my title for that. But then what is this actually called? Like this is a gift, a gender neutral baby gift, newborn baby gift or a baby gift. So that's something that usually, um, that, that's another keyword phrase. So that's what I would name the bundle would be gender neutral um, baby gift, maybe a newborn baby gift, depending on how the keywords come up in Merchant Words or Helium 10 or whatever software program you're using for that. And then... And then you would list the attributes. So first is the name of your bundle. So if you're doing like a, a gift set, like the newborn baby gift set, it would be gender neutral newborn baby gift set includes organic cotton swaddling blanket, um, three burp cloths, and I don't know what else, like a hooded towel. I don't know, something that kind of goes along with the gender neutral colors, things like that. So that would be something I would absolutely do. You name it first, then attributes second. Why? Because most people aren't typing in, unless they're looking for something absolutely spe specific, but sometimes people are just doing a search. They're trying to see what's out there and available for this particular product they're looking for. Same thing with like Mother's Day gift ideas. Mother's Day gift ideas, people type that into Amazon a lot or Father's Day gift ideas or whatever that is and it, it coming up. So naming your bundle is important first and then the attribute second because you have uh, 250 characters, I think, to use in a title, 180 characters to use in a title. So that's a lot of characters to be able to say the title or the name of your bundle and then all of the things that are in there. So that's definitely something that's a golden nugget is to be able to name that. And remember going all the way back to the beginning about what we said, what I said about the avatar, the person buying your item, that person is going to type something into Amazon in order to find your product. What is that person typing in? Are they typing in the attributes of your bundle? Maybe it's gender neutral baby gift ideas because we don't know what so-and-so's baby is going to be, but we'd like to send them a gift before the baby's born. Okay, gender neutral means we don't have to worry about whether it's a boy or a girl or colors. We just get to send something that's neutral. So that's what your customer, defining what your customer you most likely is going to type in to find this gift set or this product. Now, if like the, if my daughter has a Nintendo Switch and there's a Nintendo Switch accessories, that's what I look for after Christmas. She's like, oh, I want a case and I want this and I want this. Okay. So I'm looking up, um, Nintendo Switch accessories. And then I find this Nintendo Switch accessory kit that comes with a case and a screen protector and the little things that cover up the little knobs and the controller holder and like all these different things, right? So I was like, oh, this is a great accessory pack. Add to cart. I loved it. The fact that I didn't have to keep looking and keep trying to find something that fit into this situation here. So, so literally calling your bundle something is really, really important because that's how people are going to be looking it up. And the way, oh yeah, and the way you find those items is using, finding what those keywords are and what the potential customer would type that in. I use Merchant Words to look at what are the top searches, top search keyword phrases for those attributes, all those types of things, and looking at Merchant Words in order to find what is the best 
and most precise keyword phrase to use in order for people to find what I'm selling. Do you, are you only successful if you create new bundles and make up your own products? Um, no, you can be successful by looking at other people's products and listing under their products. Um, you, but creating your own means that you're carving out your little piece of the marketplace that nobody else can copy that. No one else can make that. Nobody else can go that way because you did all the work. Now that's the last thing you want to do is go through all the work of creating a bundle and then not protecting it and then letting every person in the world want to come and jump on your bundle because you already did all the hard work, all the research, all the ordering, all the placing of the bundle items together. And now this person just waits for you to create it. And then they stalk your store. And then every time you create a new bundle, they already know who your vendors are. They get the stuff and they submit it. Well, that's just as bad as doing retail arbitrage and having someone jump on your, your listing. The price is going to tank. You're going to compete. It's going to be terrible. So doing it, making up your own yes is the best way to be the most successful because you're eliminating your competition. Um, but doing it properly is the best way to protect yourself from that is you can use products that are common, pop, pop, products that are popular, things like that, but doing it in a way, in the bundle way to protect your item from hijackers is the best way to do that. So I guess the answer to your question is making up your own bundles uh, the best way to be successful? Yes. Um, can you be successful other ways? Absolutely. But that is the way to where you're not worrying about, I don't have to go in and change my prices on my bundles like ever because I set the price because I'm the only one selling that item, that bundle. So I don't have to mess with price. I don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. I don't, um, I've had, I think one IP issue in five years because it was actually a, a Amazon algorithm thing that, that ended up kicking it out. It wasn't really the, an actual like company coming out to me and saying that. Why? Because I have permission or I have um, full reins to be able to sell any of the things I'm selling in bundles and I don't have IP issues because I don't have brands coming after me because I work with people that don't care what I do with their items. You could literally sell them out of the back of your trunk if you want to. I buy items and work with vendors that do not care what I do with the products after that. So whether I bundle them or I list them on Amazon or I sell them in eight packs or two packs or nothing, they don't care. They make their money by doing business with me wholesale. And they say, whatever you do with our products after this, we don't care. Just, you, we already made your money, uh, their money. So then there's some brands that do care. And those are the ones that you have to either have exclusive permission for or you consider working with them or working with a different company that makes similar products. What was the ROI? Oh, I handled that already. The ROI you suggest, I always suggest 100%. I mean, why put in so much time, money, and effort, and energy into something if you're not going to make at least double your money on it? I mean, why not? You're putting the effort in. You want to be able to sell some things that you can at least, you know, I would say you should be making at least $5 a bundle. If you're not, then you better be doing like a lot of volume. Because I, bundles are a margin game, not a volume game. So like Walmart plays a volume game. They sell stuff dirt cheap and they make a couple pennies on everything, but they sell millions of products to millions of people every single day. As bundlers, we build our profits on, on our profit and our margin rather than on the volume. So I want to make at least $10 per bundle that I'm selling. Otherwise, it doesn't feel like it's worth it to me to do all the work. Plus the prep center fees and custom packaging and all that. That's like my personal threshold. Um, because the work is the same. So I might as well make that. And I'm not interested in vol volume. I'm talking, there's people that sell 5,000 units a month of something. I'm not interested in selling 5,000 units a month. That's more margin for error. There's more room there to make mistakes and lose products or things get damaged or broken or whatever. I'm talking about a couple hundred units a month per bundle, maybe. Because I'd rather do margin than have to push a ton of volume that I'm only making 10 cents on and hope that somehow the price doesn't change. So I work more on volume on margin than I do on volume. And so that's why I suggest trying to get as most for your money as you can. Doubling your cost of goods, I think, would be a reasonable expectation. It just depends on your cost of goods. So um, 
those are the top 10 bundling questions that you've sent in. If you have additional bundling questions, please send them to me, but also the Wholesale Bundle System pre-order. Don't forget about that. Mommyincome.com slash system. Get the Wholesale Bundle System because all of these answers are in there. And then some. And then extra. And also templates. And also over-the-shoulder guides and videos of how I even write titles for my, my listings. How to list your product on Amazon. How to list your bundle. Yes, that's part of the Wholesale Bundle System. How to specifically and step-by-step step get and obtain custom packaging, how to create your logo, how to get your logo created if you're not creative, how to vendor, how to get catalogs and work with vendors and things like all of that is in the Wholesale Bundle System and 3.0 is coming soon. So uh, mommyincome.com slash system, get your pre-order today and hopefully that will answer the rest of your bundle questions. Guys, I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing right now. I don't take that for granted. Thank you for listening to the Amazon Files podcast. Please leave a review. Let me know how much you enjoy the show and I'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.